from uh, Dave's family. I'm in, uh, live in Fairfax and work in St. Albans. Um, I think everyone here, uh, I think what you've, you've done with, with bringing this forum um, is that has made me think from a lot of different perspectives on this. And, you know, with what I say, I don't want these people, the people who maybe oppose this and have the opposing views, it, I don't really feel it's a personal thing. I've done my own research, and I'm in favor of, of the project. Um, I travel 104 daily to St. Albans. I see the ridge. Um, I've talked to a lot. A lot of people, I'd say like 95% of the people, and I don't think I have like a big windmill on my forehead that says, this is how I feel. They really, uh, as far as 95% of the people I talk to uh, feel that um, they don't mar the view. And I appreciate what the fellow said from uh, Cobble Mountain. If anything, I think the uh, towers would remind us and the kids that energy is a finite quality, must be conserved and used wise wisely. 1995, my household didn't have a flat screen TV. We didn't have a computer. Um, uh, didn't have cell phones. All things need to be charged. Um, looking at the uh, stuff on the net about nuclear, coal, oil, gas, I mean, they all have their pluses and minuses. Um, I think some of the things, I don't know the fellow who spoke very loudly but had a lot of facts. Some of those facts that I saw, um, you know, I saw different things uh, about the capacity that we have to have, like maybe 660 megawatts from Yankee. Uh, that you might get, um, but you know, what are we, you, you need to generate, you need to have more of a capacity to back that up. Um, I believe it was 1,800, so you know, you can do a lot with those figures. Which one are you using? 600, you're using 1,800. Um, I think the subsidies um, that we're talking about for the wind industry, what do you think we're spending in um, Iraq, now Afghanistan, doing all this oil stuff? to take their way. You know, we have a way overbuilt um, defense budget to do that. Subsidy wise, what does that add per kilowatt hour? You're not talking in cents there, it's probably hundreds of dollars. Going back to President Nixon, um, all the presidents, Carter, uh, Reagan, uh, really had a policy to try and get us off foreign oil. Nothing has ever been done about that. And I think this is a small move, and um, you know we're not looking at a thousand wind turbines in Vermont. We're looking at five, and I think a small step is a good step. Uh, with what you have down in Sears, Searsburg, you know those few things will help too. Some of the trade-offs you get, you know, we talked about keeping the Georgia mountain green the way it is, the trees. Um, if we have global warming, and this comes from uh, the Proctor research in, in Jericho. Like two degrees in, within 50 years is going to cause our maple industry to basically wither. It's going to go north because they can't handle the uh, warmer temperatures. Uh, the colors um, that we so need, the uh, red, vibrant red maples to, to attract the tourists, they're not going to be there. So if you look at it, wind turbine industry trying to go green, trying to get away from uh, all this global warming that's being shipped to us from the Midwest, that's going to help us out. Uh, right now, in, in pretty much the media, uh, and it's been stated before, it's kind of cool, C-O-O-L, to be green. And I think, you know, a nationwide thing, if you look at California, where wind turbines, wind farms have been there for uh, 30 years. You know, I just went to Yosemite, went to San Francisco, Big Sur, uh, this summer with my family, and, you know, they have a great tourist industry, and, and the wind farms there aren't really turning the tourists off. I think I've kind of hit on most of it. Um, you know, if you drive around northern Vermont, what are the, some of the things we see? Uh, you'll see Danamora, the big debate is, is that Danamora we're looking at, the radar bubble in, in St. Albans. Uh, you see radio towers, you see water uh, tower park in Costco. You know, all these things were, were controversial at one point. Uh, I'm sure when the Native Americans were here and they saw us build our houses and went to farms in 
went to the interstate, you know, change, um, change is a painful thing. And, you know, I appreciate your feelings. Um, I'd like to thank the Harrisons. I'd like to thank you people for listening to it. Uh, I think it's a good exchange of information. My name is Lawrence Mott from Jules Corps. Uh, I'd like the board to consider the opportunity we have here to pursue an energy source which may be new, but is clearly on a path of continued reduced costs. Uh, and as we've seen from our neighbors in the north in Quebec and around us in this region of New England, there's a large, uh, uh, shall I say, uh, grasping to work towards wind power. Um, interesting, the gentleman mentioned New Hampshire. We now have New Hampshire with a much larger wind farm than we do here in Vermont. Uh, so we are, as a nation and a world, moving in that direction. And I want to make sure that Vermont, number one, gets a wind farm because I think the people, uh, and I understand some of their concerns, need to get to touch it and see it. And it's very important that we get one up and running here in our state doing it in a Vermont style. And I think it's very interesting the way this particular project's being pursued as I would call it a Vermont style with a family rather than a big foreign entity. This is local. Um, I'd also like to have us consider the uh, continued efforts that I think the Public Service Board has done is bringing the uh, review of expertise and the ability for multiple parties to come talk to you about uh, all the issues, and that means even the A&R and Storm One or other issues, I think I'd like to have more and more uh, addressed with your entity uh, rather than the difficulty we have currently where some projects, while they may have a CPG uh, from Section 248, continue to kind of stall as we go forward. Thank you. My name is Richard Strong, senior. I not in agreement with putting the towers there. I don't think that they are very cost effective. The return isn't very good. I find it negative. I'm also concerned in the erosion of the land and what's going to do to the environment. But if it was to be productive and would supply 50% of our needs, then I'd be for it. I don't see that happening. I just want to say I'm against it. And also, uh, when I went down to Pennsylvania, I saw the wind tower they had down there. I'm waiting down to see the other two. They were an eyesore. I didn't like the look. And uh, in Vermont, we do have a few things that we have on our landscape. And we're going to the golf ball and the fan. Well, that helped protect all of us for 30 or 40 odd years and they have a reason to be there. But I am against them. Thank you. My name is Patrick Fitzgerald. Um, I'm against Disney turbines. Um, I live on Disney Island, so I'm going to be living right after I don't have to be in the window. Um, we also have horses. Who's going to be more than one? You have one. Okay. There you go. And um, I just don't think it's a good idea to have them there. Um, again, we have horses, and with noise levels, I don't really want to be thrown off my horse. Um, my horse is not there for noises that don't belong up there. And, you know, we live on the farm. It's our life. And my sister and I, we try to live green. We use clean, friendly materials. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, they don't belong there. Um, it's not very windy there for starters, so I really don't think that's the right spot. But thank you, and have a good day. I'm Justin Lindholm. I own the property on Leinster Mountain in Leinster, New Hampshire. And tomorrow morning before daylight, I will be walking to my deer stand down on Leinster Mountain, um, opening day of regular rifle deer season. Last weekend was opening day of uh, muzzleloader season, and for the first time in my life, I didn't have to use a compass because for three miles you can hear those turbines and you know exactly where you are in the woods. It's a very rough, dark woods down here and uh, it's quite amazing. It sounds like last weekend at two miles, it sounded like a huge truck trying to go forward and backward to get out of a huge mud puddle all day long. That's at two miles. And you keep hoping he'll get out of that mud puddle, but he doesn't. 
and it's all dead. <laughs>